Hello, this is Elijah Ignatieff of uh, The Very Secret Plan, and I was recently contacted by Ilya Hu, and uh, I was uh, on the um, Earth Manifesto broadcast on the Synergy stage. That's when you contacted me. I had a new protocol of uh, sending a, a video to people to find out who they are, to, to see what is the connection point. And then after seeing this video, then they decide to continue. Then we have an investigation. That's the context for this conversation. Uh, neither of us have met. This is our first contact. And uh, I think across the planet right now, there are different types of people who are wanting to unify and connect and to uh, find allies in doing the bigger work on the planet. And so that's what this is to me. And so I was wondering if you could perhaps give your give it a bit of an introduction and a little bit of a download as to who you are and why you uh, connected with me. Okay, sure. So my name is Eliao. Um, I did actually uh, saw you on the Earth Manifesto uh, conference, which was very interesting. I am uh, an artist, mostly a photographer. I've been um, uh, nomad and a gypsy for a long time. I've been living on many different places on this planet um, as a photographer, as a witnessing uh, different experience of humanity. I'm interested in um, in subcultures and um, an identity of, uh, of people, how they relate one to, to another. And uh, in the last couple of years, we've been really like wondering how we could, uh, I've been wondering through others group, how we can really change the way we live and how we use these resources and how we collaborate and how we do things differently. So years ago, I think the French documentary Demain came out and, uh, and basically they look at all different uh, position of society, which is from politics to economy, to education, to banking, to health, to this, to that. And they look in the world at one place that somebody had something right, something that was working on a small scale and just expose it so people would have the information. Um, and so this made me think that uh, Sweden social security has 6 million people and it's clockwork. France has 60 million and it's a disaster. Why don't you make group of 6 millions and get people interconnected and aware of that system is supporting them <laughs> and then they would be helping the system. So this is just like finding very simple uh, ideas and bring them back to a larger scale or the other way around, you know, macro to cosmos, cosmos to, to nano, etc. And interestingly, like the things that you presented, most of the, the wheels and the satellite and the mapping is download that I've been receiving for you know, a couple of years as well. And me and other people, and we've been talking in that, I was talking with Brock uh, about this. And uh, I'm just at the point where I have energy, will, desire, ideas, uh, physical and intellectual and artistic skills that I want to put forwards to create, to support this. So this is what I am and where I'm at. <laughs> Imagine that you have a, a lifetime of work and uh, uh, m many talents and many gifts that you want to share and leave a legacy behind you. How are you in your network at home? Like, are you <clears throat> like supported in what you do? Do you find um, you reach your niche? Or are you still sort of trying to find a, a place to have your gifts land? Um, I don't really have a niche yet. I have multiple niche. So I'm, um, you know, like I'm basically like the outsider that belongs to all the different groups. So I'm into so many communities and I'm not completely in any of them. So basically I'm like a... Um, how can I express this? I have so many groups that I'm part of, but then I don't feel a thousand percent uh, in it. So I'm just floating in between. What I'm trying to achieve now is really have the, my, my point of view now is that I'm tired of talking. I'm tired of like philosophy and, and thinking. I really, and I'm tired of resisting and I'm tired of conspiracy and I'm tired of spending time thinking of things that I don't like. 
Mm. I want to focus on what I like and what I need to do and how I can get it done and how I can find support and be support of others. So basically there's a system, the new economy is a win-win situation where everybody gets something out of it in different proportion. So we know how to reduce the greed and how much we want to get from something. And then there's enough from everyone to use part of this uh, cheesecake, you know, that we can divide. Mm -hmm. And so I want to amplify this in my lifestyle in the way I interact with people. I've been holding a lot of circle space with people. So they were able to come and, and expose their vulnerability, their challenge, their personal, uh, you know, quest. And, um, and so this is where I'm standing. But I see that there's a bigger picture. There is more movement happening and it needs of a, uh, governance in needs of a basically what i really my my vision of how the work should be organized is is the governance where it's kind of a jedi board with 12 people and just like what you kind of did and those 12 people each have their own board of 12 people and those 12 people have all have their own boards of 12 people etc 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 infinity and everyone can go back and forth and exchange information ids knowledge technology you name it well, I think that we're, we're all getting a similar download because the idea I've been playing with is called the Shared Knowledge Community, where you have 12 twelves, 144 people, and, yeah. and you can't just keep going down. It, it was more like, a, you know, they say if you go over 150 people in a community, you sort of lose, lose touch with people. So the container was at 144, but obviously it can sort of expand out as, as it grows. I believe this is true for uh, physical uh leaving like once you have a group of 144 everybody gets to know each other and there's an interaction if you go beyond that in a physical place then you lose that personal interaction because there's people you don't know or you're not acquainted with but i think online it's unlimited well i i recently went from about 1400 people on facebook down to about 100 and i found that I, I didn't know who they were. They didn't know who I was. We weren't connecting. And I, I just, I, th I find Facebook to be more limiting in terms of its capabilities as an infotech system. So I, I, I'm looking for more quality, more connection, uh, more collaboration, mm -hmm. but also like, like this, like, I mean, I, if I'm bringing someone onto my stream or into my network in some manner, I want to know who they are and I want them to know who I am rather than just, you know, the Facebook request where it's, it's just like walking down the street and someone sends you a little piece of paper goes, I want to be your friend. And then that's it. They, you say yes. And for the rest of your time together, they just walk past you and don't acknowledge anything and you don't know anything about them. And, you know, just the idea of what a friend is has been so sort of diluted because of the methodology of what happens, you know, within Facebook, there's no progression, you know, there, there's no real choice along the way to see, is this going to be valuable for both of us? Like to have the win-win, you need to have some exchange, but if, if someone is watching from the distance, and I tend to post a lot and I find I'm, whether I've, I've been deemed a conspiracy theorist, I, I seem over the years to have been putting forward a lot of the information about what's happening in a manner that most people don't. And that can sort of get you uh, labeled, you know, but now everyone's turning into conspiracy theorists because the conspiracy's gotten so big, you know? Yeah. You know, I just wanted to bounce on what you say, which is very interesting. I think what you have on Facebook or Instagram is not friends. You have witness of your self experience of your life. So basically you could have network of people who reflect who you think you are and how you expose yourself. And that creates a bullshit identity of yourself that you're trying to, uh, to grow into, <laughs> you know, and, uh, and that's not interesting. What is interesting is to do the opposite, to strip all the uh, artificial uh, system belief and go back and connect one-on-one -on -one with people and, and see what the human value is. And the, I have a, circle with a philosopher, with a Buddhist, with different people. They all have different worldviews and way of behaving. And each of them is essential. The truth is fractal. It's in all of them. And when we unite with that truth, then we all something emanate beyond what we even could think of. And if we're just trying to respectively uh, represent who we think we are, 
they were just creating like a cheesecake that you know is gonna turn bad in a couple of days <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I, a, a whittling. <laughs> Funny if you had an avatar that sort of reflected your emotional state or your state of connection with that person. And so as, as the avatar gets more and more turning into a cheesecake that's going uh -huh. to uh, realize that your assessment of the relationship isn't that particularly good. <laughs> yeah. I think like, I mean, this is what we were thinking about. And maybe you guys have more. You When I say you guys, is you and your networks and your connection. Um, I was sitting with uh, at the Red Lightning in Burning Man last last uh, last year, last uh, summer, and we called uh, a circle every morning, you know, for an hour, an hour and a half, and talking about how we can create. Um, the idea was to create maybe a new Facebook or a new social media platform that was linked on what can I do for you, or what is your dream, what is your quality. So instead of saying like, you know, I like strawberry and I'm climbing the Mount Everest and that's a picture of my girlfriend. It's like, oh, I'm, I'm a handyman. I'm good at mathematics. I have knowledge of uh, biochemy or I'm a good carpenter. And then through that, we interconnect people with similar dreams and similar ideas so they can uh, interact, interconnect and be the missing link between them and the final project, you know? And so we were talking about with a bunch of people that you know that were actually at your conference. Uh, and uh, like the thing that comes into my mind, like the, the things that make me dream that turns my guts into like a, a little uh, firework is like the idea of, uh, there's this French economist uh, who talks about the only value in, in the world is, is time and attention. If I gave everybody 20 bucks in my surrounding, I would be poorer and nobody would be richer. If I give them knowledge, then everybody gets smarter and I don't become stupid, right? Uh, but the thing in order to receive that knowledge, you have to give me time and attention because without these two, it doesn't work. You know, like knowledge doesn't come right away unless you have a download, but, and People have been playing Warcraft for a couple of billion years now with time and attention. So with the same energy they have in gaming, they could have changed six, seven times the history of this planet and this civilization. And so gaming was kind of like the extension of where we could go. And so we, I was riffing on this and maybe the idea was to dream on, on, uh, on buying the world. And the idea of buying the world is we create apps and games where people can buy centimeter square of the Amazonians of any different forest and, and place in the world as a hearse keeper. It's not there to use, but it's there to protect for the seven generation or for the whatever you want to call it. And through these apps, once you buy a piece of the land for $1, $10, $1 dollar, whatever the size you want to buy, you have access to the network who you have ambassador and diplomats who can go and introduce you to people who live on this land. What they do, their culture, their civilization, their medicine, their philosophy, you know? And then we create a population of earth guardians that can um, steward the land and protect it from invader and from uh, people who want to frack it or create palm oil industry. And we still create a boundary to respect tribal and villages and people how they live so we don't want to change their their dynamic with the world yet you know so it, it's just like bond it's just like protection there and if this generate money of course to gaming and this and that we can pay every government for the land we use so they don't have to sell it to chinese oil diggers or to other people so this is a very simple idea it's a very complex to put on together because you need lawyers you need uh, this and that I would be taking the, the, the role of one of the ambassador that would be inland, meeting the people, taking pictures, telling stories, sharing content, you know? So that would be a dream of mine to live a life like this and go from one place to another and keep on building that protection uh, field around places that are, culture that are in danger and zones that needs to be the lungs of the world like the Amazonians or Antarctica and says that needs to be respected for the balance of the ecosystem. I, I love the idea. And uh, I think like you were saying, like that there's so many best practices that have proven themselves to work and 
they need to be supported. And ideas like this need a, a global audience, you know. And I think what the Earth Manifesto is looking at being is like more of a the utilization of the modern media, the utilization of the modern software, not just a, a static document, but mm -hmm. uh, the beginning of a document that then gets translated into sort of exactly what you're saying. And there, there's a real, you probably saw it, right? There's a real excitement from yes. people there. We were all, you know, to, to get that type of people there in short notice reminded a, a great, a great job. And everyone, you know, was present and, focused and humble and, you know, bringing great sort of uh, networks of their own assets and willing to participate, right? And, and I think when humans, you know, are willing to pitch in, they see everyone willing to pitch in, it equals the playing field and it, and it, it sets a, a tone that really inclusive. And, and, you know, my own work has been working on something called the inflow matrix operating system and it's an ethical business system it's it's an operating system that can organize any job any organization in any community and it becomes the foundation for a shared knowledge community which i told you about where the focus is on a person's gift rather than on the commodities or products that you're creating i mean it it you know it makes total sense but it's, it's like rocket science to imagine that the infrastructure that is there for the human rather than just to make the profit. And I, and I think that's the big difference between the paradigms because what I see and I, I imagine everyone sees is like there's a big distinction between the old paradigm based upon fear and a new paradigm based upon love. And that the present moment is the choice of which one you want to participate at each moment but the mind needs that distinction at a very high level to begin to conceptualize this new paradigm because most people or a lot of people you know, have the belief that it's not possible and we just look at what's happening on the planet right now we say you know oh, humans can't do that but but it's, it's like everything starts with an idea and everything starts with a belief. And if you, if there's so many people that want to create that new world. And again, so many people have best practices and have figured out bits and pieces of it. But how do you get everyone's buy-in that's from the people and not like from the UN or from some government institution? Because, you know, to me, they've lost the trust of the people. I mean, if I may, they were never trustworthy anyway. Say again. So they were never trustworthy. The UN is a is a masquerade, and all of the world. I mean, the people we elected, and they're supposed to represent us. Once they elected, they have their own. Uh, I mean, right now, look what they're doing. They're trying to pass all the laws that they want because if people is in quarantine. I mean, who does that? I mean, that's not democracy. <laughs> that's oligarchy. You know, it's uh, anyway. Let's not go too far in this. But uh, where where I really meet you, and I really feel so. Uh, so uh, strongly is that I want to take this this concept. Maybe you take uh, downtown LA, the homeless population. It's a human tragedy. Like one of the richest country, country like state in in America has like a population of people who live of card box and tent and and eat from trash and this and that and are and people just walk by it like on a daily basis like nothing you know like it's okay. So this is like your little pinky toe on your foot that has cancer. And you're like, oh, it's just my pinky toe. It's not me. It's just my pinky toe. It's no big deal. It's not my face. It's not my heart. It's not my hands. Like people don't see it. And it's part of us. Like those homeless are me, are you, are our culture, our society. They are the, the, um, the waste of what we created as a system. And so... You know, like the Burning Man community is beautiful and, and so powerful in the imaginative way of creating new way of living. Why don't we get uh, this, this, this philosophy of Burning Man, find a place east of East LA, create some kind of circus, imaginative dream life, bring those people in, have professional and, and artists and other people and DJ and musician, create like a refugee camp. <laughs> of love and fun, like a Burning Man, you know, so everybody can play and dance in an avatar. And in this, we can do some work on seeing 
who needs what. And then you can help people. And when you have start helping people, you realize that they all have very specific gift that they can support themselves with their gift because they are, you know, they are a singer, they are um, physically uh, strong or they have intellectual things or they have manual technique or they have a, a, a worldview that you didn't even suspect it. If you spend six years in the streets, you have a different perspective on life. And that could be an interesting way of uh, modern nomad, normal, modern uh, tribal life. They know what it is like. Maybe they can help us because <laughs> we, need, we need that information as well. So, you know, like refugee camp should be like a playground, not a place for people to suffer. They don't have to work. They don't have to do anything. So let's find a way to make it an experience Right. I agree. Instead of yeah, and 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 I think this is this is to our reach, right? This is something we could have happen like in the next two years or in the next, you know, because it. And I think like, and that's where I need your help, or I need to find how to make it. Is really the idea is how do you create a local experience that can move global? So you start by five, ten, fifteen, twenty, hundred people. Mm -hmm. And if the blueprints and the, the cell works, then you just replicate it, like what nature does. Well, the, the, when I spoke about the inflow matrix, it's a, it's a series of maps. Mm -hmm. they're, they're mind maps that, again, can sort of organize anything. There are structure words and that you fill in the content for what you want. And, and the organization that I've, you know, the, it's, it's a media game called Planetary Guardians. So along the Earth Guardian idea, but it's, but it's, it's, you start with a team of four, mm -hmm. and then that four turns into the shared knowledge community of 144, like the four is the seed, and then you get five of those teams, and, that you, and then you have 20, and I don't know if you know about the Mayan calendar, but there's 20 sort of energetic symbols, or glyphs, um, or archetypes, mm -hmm. that, you know, Number 20 is basically a tetrahedron with its four points with four tetrahedrons. So four plus 16 equals 20. It's the first time the, the basic platonic solid becomes whole again. So the number 20 is very significant in terms of how many people you have. It's like 20 amino acids. Like you have one from each and it builds the whole. And then you have seven of those, one at each chakra level, and so now you're taking into account the difference with consciousness levels. And so you've got places, positions for each person that's significant. And we're building upon sacred geometry. We're, we're, we're creating a new cellular system for ourselves, not based on the corporation or any of the old paradigm structures, but based upon sort of like the natural laws of the universe. And then again, all across the, the, the world, there'll be these shared knowledge communities growing and they'll have the same operating system that at some point will connect them together and have a, a real sharing of knowledge and best practices. Cause like you said, I can share this knowledge with you and I'm not losing anything and I'm actually gaining something as you grow more powerful with the use of it. We build a whole new infrastructure that again is focused on love, focused on sharing, focused on giving and all of a sudden the world sees this alternative coming and then everyone goes yeah. into a new one. Uh, the hundred, the hundred monkeys tilting points, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And then it's like, it's basically what it is. Like we are a bunch of neurons. Like that's, we are habitats for habitats, for habitats, for habitats, you know? <laughs> my gut is like, I have a trillion cell in my system. I'm an habitat for those trillion cell and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, we have to harmonize and, and we have to have a sense of purpose. And I think the idea of, uh, this is that is maybe like the plan is like, how do we move from this society into like AI is coming tomorrow. I'm pretty skeptical on, on the well-being of, of humanity with correlation to AI, unless we have a woman, a feminine energy over looking at artificial intelligence with what it means, you know? Because men's are going to make AI, we're going to get vaccinated, we're going to become numbers, and <laughs> it's terrible, you know, it's not working for my idea of humanity. Um, but again, I think it's, um, it's, you can't change your system, you can only change yourself. And then as, we, as I feel like you've changed yourself, I've changed myself, maybe we can unite. <laughs> 
in, in supporting that shift and that change until it becomes a new ground and a new basis. And, and then when it's solid enough, then people might be attracted. Because when you see people uh, happy, in love, balanced, mentally, physically, and uh, spiritually, then it's very attractive. People rayonate, people glow. And that's what we want to maybe generate, like a place of, uh, of self-healing, basically. No more gurus, <laughs> no more pyramids. <laughs> you know, we all are are self-healers and we need to understand the different tools that we can access to tap in. Well, I would agree with everything you're saying. Very wise words. And I think what I see is peer to peer. It's, it's like teams hold each other accountable and teams, yeah. teams can support each other's weaknesses. And each of us may have gifts and talents, but in certain areas, we're not that strong. And so teams are always the way that, you know, I think humans do that. But most teams within the business environment are sort of, again, linked to that corporate infrastructure or nonprofit infrastructure. And it isn't utilizing the real gifts of the person first and then revolving whatever you're going to create as a synergy of whatever you're, you're having as a team. And uh, again, it's, it seems so basic that... <laughs> Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, it's so like, it's like why did you think of this before? Like, well, why? One and what? One and one equal five. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, it's ridiculous. And I, I don't. Do you know Carl Kalman's work uh, regarding the nine waves of creation? No. He's he's a, a man who dissected the uh, Mayan temples. Mm -hmm. the not the the Mayan temples all have nine levels. Okay. And he saw that the evolution of consciousness has come in nine different waves. And, and if you look over billions and then hundreds of millions of years and millions of years, it's more at the biological level for, for first the cells and then the multi-cells. And mm -hmm. by, the, by the sixth wave, it was for civilization. And then it became industrial and then it become, became digitized. Mm -hmm. but, but the ninth wave is unity consciousness. Mm -hmm. So each wave was, was, was a foundation for the next level had to occur but the civilization and the industrial uh, waves, which are more longer term, are sort of, in a sense, fighting with the digitization and the unity wave. The unity wave only came in until after 2012. I don't know, I think just before 2011. And that's all the new kids, all the crystal kids, all, all, the, all the, mm -hmm. the, the people. It's a quantum jump. So, so those people and organizations that are in the lower waves can't grasp. Right. The 5D. The, yeah, the 5D unity existence. Mm -hmm. And all yeah. the people that are already there seem insane to these people. And, and those people seem insane. And so that the, the gap between the paradigms, like by what Carl Kalman is saying is, the unity consciousness is like a scientific fact. It's not like a hope or a maybe. It is, it is something that exists that as, as our species evolves and our gener and so, you know, the old generations go, these new generations are all going to be born into this wave. Mm -hmm. So that the idea of the thousand years of the golden light Peace. Yeah, there were, yeah. Uh, is very, you know, uh, a possible not just a possibility but an, a, a something that will occur and i know mm -hmm. also you know they say we're in the kali yuga age and that seems to last for a long time and and humanity's consciousness has a hard time breaking out of that and so these different worldviews have different ideas of the larger picture that we're in but i i, I like the mayan because i think it, it's pointing to something here on this planet that i think is a larger experiment and that we're here to experience uh, a species-wide ascension that is actually occurring right now, and many people have tapped into it, uh, but not everyone has. But as little conversations like this occur all over the planet, especially like in Zoom, where you know when we were growing up, you couldn't do this. It's yeah, yeah. Awesome. It's like yeah. this, like sci-fi. <laughs> and now this is a norm, right? It's I mean, the norm. I had a TV with two channel black and white. And I was like, wow. <laughs> with a, not even a remote control. It was like, a, like when, I, when we had the first remote control, it was like a, a cable, like it was connected. It was like, oh yeah. <laughs> you know, like where, where I'm really following you, I think it's, this is like the point that interests me as a, 
as a thinker, which I'm not as an artist and all of that, is that we are on a cross point of humanity. We can go into like transmutation into technology and, and start to have like chips and stuff on ourselves and become superhuman. You know, like the Nietzsche's uh, <laughs> perspective of evolving this human stuff. Or we can do the opposite is that learn that the capacity that these technology are, which is telepathy, uh, moving things, and we can learn how to use this and become that. So uh, there's a movie called uh, La Belle Verte, which was done in the 90s in France, and it's another planet, and they refuse to go see humans because they are retarded. And what they do in this planet is that they exercise, they grow food, they're vegetarian, of course, and then they dance and celebrate, and they work on humans' uh, psychic abilities so they can communicate and share heart space and mind space and all kinds of things. And that's all they need to be happy, and that's heaven. Mm. And they only live for four, three, four, five hundred years <laughs> because they have no stress, and all they hear is to collaborate and support each other's process in the growth. And uh, you come to Earth, and it's pollution, fighting, this, that, you know. I think the best idea is one of my favorite concept is, and that's really where, that's why I reach out to you basically. Um, imagine that the sequoia trees are the, one of the tallest trees on the planet and they're really old and they have very shallow roots and they still maintain for thousands of years there, you know, against all the elements. And they find out that the sequoia trees, they interlock into each other's. And that's why the roots is so shallow because they are connected with other trees and the entire forest is the support of the tree. And that's what I feel like humans should be doing. No deep, but interconnected. I don't know. Again, wise words. Uh, <laughs> I recently read an article about why transformational change doesn't happen in organizations and they they're saying that they have a hub and they have all the connections, but there's just these solitary connections and that the actual, you have to have everything connected to everything mm. in order for exactly what you're saying, right? Like yeah. if I'm in an organization, I should know everybody and know what everyone is doing. And then the information will, will, will go where it needs to go when you get it. But so often we only connect with a few people and we're shut down and we're not, we're not open with the sharing of our knowledge because of the competitive environment and the fear-based mentality. Mm -hmm. But if you're in a loving environment and you, you, you don't have that, you have a deep trust, everyone's your friend. And, yeah. and it's, it's such a different environment, right? I, I think mm -hmm. when, you, when you've tasted it, when you've had it just a little bit, you're, you're in shock at, at how open and loving humans can be very quickly uh, as opposed to environments where no one is and uh, no one knows how to so and maybe it's maybe it's not a constant you know you don't have always to be love you can be angry and pissed off and mad you can move from high vibration to low vibration but the idea is that you have the access of modality so you're not stuck <laughs> in you know because people who think they are in high vibration all the uh, healers and the spiritual people of this planet are actually super egocentric egomaniac and you know all the i mean you know i love that all the gurus that we had you know from the east and the west they end up to be pervert manipulator <laughs> <laughs> you know so it, either way it's working it's not when you high or when you low but to be able to be this elevator that that the, the jacobs later who goes from earth to to heaven and back and forth and creates solid interaction on every level so people can access the next one and if they need to put a knee down, they can go back lower. And then, you know, I fight and I argue and I'm mad, except before it would take me six months, a year. Now it takes me an hour. And I'm like, oh man, I'm so fucking stupid. <laughs> go back. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I got carried away. My ego, my this, my that, my wound. Uh, you know what? Please forgive me. <laughs> and I can, for myself and others, I can move on and remove myself from this vibration. But I still go there. And I think that, you know, the ego and all of that is a very good engine because there's so much power. Like, look at the dark force. Like, when you're angry, you can move mountains. How do you shift that anger into creativity? Not cancel it. 
And that's all the thing that I think we can all work together because if we become each other's mirror in a positive growth and we accept the uh, up and down of, of fluctuation of energy and consciousness and awareness, then maybe it becomes real. So nobody's on the cloud, nobody's you know, above and nobody's below. We all are different you know, music notes on the, on the partition. I, I fully resonate with everything you're saying and I'm uh, very glad we've talked. I, I, I'm kind of going to keep it at a half hour. Uh, if you okay. Don't... No, that's good. This is a good introduction. You know, I mean, this is my, uh, so I have energy. I have uh, thoughts. Um, let me know how we can connect further and then I'll share with you some data that I have too and then see how we can go from there. I mean, you know, but I'm really attracted by um, what you're doing and what you're generating and all of it and, and the sense of humor that you have you know, which is important. Well, yeah, it's, it's uh, I find that, like you say, I have a range and uh, my own particular sense of humor is necessary for me to deal with the, the world as it is. And uh, not, not everyone is so open to it, but I guess you'll see uh, in terms of my postings, there's quite a range and uh, I will load this up in the very secret plan. In turn, I, I have a, a channel on YouTube then I'll post mm -hmm. it on Facebook and I'll, I'll share it to you. And then this again is kind of like anyone who comes into the very secret plan uh, has the possibility of their own show in the Planetary Guardians Network. And so I, I see in yourself a wise elder and I see that you're uh, a great positive influence to the people around you and your community. And I don't know if you put forth media, um, but I, I'm hope my one of my purposes is to help people with their purpose. Mm -hmm. So I have, again, many tools and, and many ways to assist people uh, in, in doing that. So I'm very uh, pleased to meet you. And thank you for reaching out. And thank you for getting past my qualifying video. And uh, uh, this has been a wonderful first contact. I look forward to further interactions. Okay, thank you. Good to meet you, Elijah. All right. Ciao. Have a great day. Bye-bye.